The Society of Unveiling In a certain sense, the 18th century was not entirely unlike the present. It already knew the pathos of unveiling and transparency. Thus, in his study of Rousseau, Jean Starobinsky writes, That appearances are deceiving was hardly a novel theme in 1748. In the theater and the church, in novels and in newspapers, sham, convention, hypocrisy, and mask were denounced in a variety of ways. In the vocabulary of polemic and satire, no words occurred more often than unveil and unmask. Jean Jacques Rousseau's confessions are characteristic for the incipient epoch of truth as a vow. From the outset, the confessions declare the intention to show a human being in every way true to nature. The author's enterprise, which has no precedent, involves the merciless revelation of his heart. Rousseau addresses God, I have displayed myself as I was. I have bared my secret soul as though thyself hast seen it. He means for his heart to be crystal clear. The crystalline heart provides a fundamental metaphor of Rousseau's thought. His heart, transparent as crystal, can hide nothing of what happens within it. Every mood it feels is transmitted to his eyes and face. Rousseau calls for the opening of the heart, by means of which all sentiments, all thoughts, are shared so that everyone, feeling as he should, may show himself to others as he is. Rousseau exhorts his fellow human beings to unveil their own hearts with the same sincerity. Herein lies Rousseau's dictatorship of the heart. Rousseau's demand for transparency announces a paradigm shift. The world of the 18th century was still a theater. It was full of scenes, masks, and figures. Fashion itself was theatrical. No essential difference existed between street clothes and theatrical costumes. Even masks become fashionable. People were wholly enamored of staging. They gave themselves over to scenic illusions. Ladies' hairstyles were shaped into scenes that portrayed either historical events or feelings. To this end, porcelain figures were also woven into the hair. A whole garden or a ship with full sails might be carried on one's head. Both men and women painted parts of their faces with red makeup. The face itself became a stage on which one lent expression to character traits with the help of beauty marks. Placed at the corner of the eye, a beauty mark signified passion. At the lower lip, it indicated the bearer's straightforwardness. The body was a site of scenic representation. However, it was not a matter of giving unfalsified expression to the hidden inside, much less to the heart. Instead, the point was to toy with appearances, to play with scenic illusions. The body was a doll without a soul to be dressed, decorated, and invested with signs and meanings. Rousseau sets his discourse of the heart and truth against the play of masks and roles. Thus, he vehemently criticizes the plan to erect a theater in Geneva. Theater represents an art of counterfeiting oneself, or putting on another character than one's own, of appearing different than one is, of becoming passionate in cold blood, of saying what one does not think as naturally as if one really did think about it, and finally, of forgetting one's own place by dint of taking another's. The theater is rejected as a site of disguise, appearance, and seduction lacking all transparency. Expression must not be a pose. It must reflect the transparent heart. In Rousseau, one can observe how the morality of total transparency necessarily switches to tyranny. The heroic project of transparency wanting to tear down veils, bring everything to light, and drive away darkness. The prohibition against the theater and mimesis, which Plato had already legislated for his ideal city, impresses totalitarian traits on Rousseau's transparent society. Rousseau prefers small cities because individuals always in the public eye are born censors of one another, and the police can easily watch everyone. Rousseau's society of transparency turns out to be a society of total control and surveillance. His call for transparency escalates into the categorical imperative. A single precept of morality can do for all the others. It is this. 
Never do or say anything that thou dost not wish everyone to see and hear. And for my part, I have always regarded as the worthiest of men that Roman who wanted his house to be built in such a way that whatever occurred within it could be seen. Rousseau's demand for transparency of the heart is a moral imperative. The Roman with a transparent house follows the precept of morality. Today, the perfect house with a roof, walls, windows, and doors is already hopelessly perforated by material and non-material cables. It collapses into a ruin through whose cracks gust the winds of communication. The digital wind of communication penetrates everything and makes it see through. It blows through the society of transparency. However, the digital net, even as the medium of transparency, is subject to no moral imperative. It, so to speak, lacks a heart. Traditionally, the theological metaphysical medium of truth. Digital transparency is not cardiographic, but pornographic. Moreover, it brings forth economic panoptica. The goal is not moral purification of the heart, but maximal profit, maximal attention. Utter illumination promises maximal gains.